Welcome to another tutorial video. This time around, we're gonna talk about the factors that impact enterprise value when you are analyzing and valuing companies. So the specific question I'm gonna be answering here is the following. Came in the other day. You've said before that raising debt or equity, repaying debt, repurchasing shares, issuing dividends, and so on do not impact enterprise value. So then what does impact enterprise value? When would it actually increase or decrease? Now, before answering this question, I want to correct one statement that this person made, which is namely that capital structure changes such as raising debt or equity or repaying debt or repurchasing shares will not affect enterprise value. In theory, that is true. And if you remember back to some of our other tutorials, for example, this one about what happens when a company issues shares, equity value changes, but enterprise value does not change. In theory, that is true. But if you look at my disclaimer at the top of this Excel file, you'll understand the reasons why it's not completely true. Because when a company's capital structure changes, its discount rate, its weighted average cost of capital or WAC will change. And so these types of changes will indeed make a small impact on enterprise value. Now, it is true that these changes, as I just said, will make a relatively small impact on enterprise value, especially when they change over a small range. So going from 10% debt to 20% debt is not really going to make too much of an impact on enterprise value for the most part. Equity value will indeed be far more affected by changes to capital structure than enterprise value will be. So I want to get that out of the way first, but let's go back to the original question now. And to answer this question about what impacts enterprise value, you have to think about the definition of enterprise value, namely that it's the value of the company's core business operations to all the investors in the company. I think the second part is easier to understand than the first. And this is why when you start with equity value, you have to add debt and preferred stock and convertible bonds and any other source of capital, any other form of capital that the company has, because you want to represent all the investors in the company. But let's think about the first part here. What exactly does it mean to say the value of the company's core business operations? The answer is that it means the sum of the present value of a company's unlevered free cash flows in the future, plus the present value of its terminal value. In other words, a standard DCF analysis for a company that's based on unlevered free cash flow gives you the company's implied enterprise value because you're projecting the company's unlevered free cash flows over a five year, 10 year, 15 year period. And then you are also taking the company's terminal value, what it's worth at the very end of that period, at the end of year 10 or 15 or 20 or whatever it is, you're discounting both of them back to their present value and adding everything up. So that's the other way that you can look at enterprise value here. So the answer to this question is that if something affects the company's unlevered free cash flows in the future and its terminal value at that future period or both, then that change will also affect the company's enterprise value. What does that mean more specifically? Well, the most common changes that impact a company's enterprise value are different expectations for revenue growth or for margins. So the company announces plans to the market that it thinks it will grow revenue at 15% per year. But then something happens and suddenly market expectations change and now they think that the company is going to grow at 20% per year. Or they think the opposite and they think that it's now only going to grow at 10% per year. Or on the margin side, maybe initially, maybe the company says they'll have 10% margins, but then the market expects them to actually have only 5% margins. When those expectations change, the company's enterprise value will also change. For example, maybe the company wins a major contract with a new customer. That's going to impact their revenue growth and revenue and free cash flow in the future. And so it's also going to impact their enterprise value today. Or maybe the company wants to expand into Southeast Asia and on its quarterly earnings call, it announces that it has succeeded doing that more quickly than expected. As a result, its revenue and revenue growth are both going to be higher than expected and those will also impact its enterprise value. On the margin side, maybe the company decides to close down an unprofitable division. And as a result, the margin for the company as a whole increases and 
in the future, its margins are also expected to be higher as a result of that change. Or maybe the company negotiates a better contract with its key supplier, it pays less for its inventory, and as a result, its cost of goods sold will be lower, its gross profit will be higher, and its operating margin will also be higher, and that change would also increase the company's enterprise value. Now, in a DCF analysis, there are many components that go into it. Revenue growth and operating margins are certainly some of the key components, but you also have taxes and non-cash addbacks like depreciation and amortization, working capital, the changes in operating assets and liabilities, and capital expenditures. And so all of these changes could potentially impact enterprise value as well. But the difference is that for the most part, changes in these types of items will make a fairly small impact next to changes in revenue growth and operating margins. The other point is that these items tend to stay in fairly narrow ranges over time, whereas with revenue growth and operating margins, you can see much, much bigger changes, especially over the long term. If you look at something like depreciation and amortization, and the company has 3% right now, so DNA represents 3% of its revenue, chances are that's not going to suddenly jump up to 15% in the future. It's probably going to stay somewhere in that range of 3%, 1%, 2%, 4%, 5%, something like that. Whereas revenue growth, if a company is growing at 40%, that could easily decline down to 10% or 5% or 15% over the long term. So to look at this in a bit more detail, let's go back into Excel and see how much each of these might impact enterprise value. I have the calculation for the company's implied enterprise value based on the DCF analysis right here. And so if we go in, let's start with their initial revenue growth. And let's say that initially we had the company growing at 40%. Let's take it down to 30% now and see what happens. Enterprise value is cut in half, almost. It was initially 13.2 billion, but after we make that change, it falls to only 6.7 or 6.8 billion. So there's a huge impact there. On the revenue growth side, we have the company's growth rate declining by about 3% per year here each year. If we make it decline by only 2% instead, enterprise value jumps up from around 13.3 billion to 17.7 billion. So there is a huge impact there, especially because these changes are cumulative over time. On the operating margin side, let's say the company's operating margin goes from 35% to 30%. Enterprise value falls it was originally 13.3 billion. After that change, it falls to 11.1 billion. And then similarly, if you talk about the change in the operating margin, if we make it negative 1.5% instead, enterprise value falls to 11.6 billion. So all those changes make quite a big impact. By contrast, if you look at something like depreciation and amortization and you take it from 3% of revenue per year to 4%, enterprise value increases a little bit goes up from 13.3 billion to 13.8 billion, but it's not a huge change. The change in working capital, even if we make it significantly bigger, so make it go from negative 2% to negative 5%, enterprise value changes a little bit, but it's a pretty small change next to everything else here. And then finally, capital expenditures, even if we increase this substantially and we make it go from negative 1% to negative 10%, enterprise value does fall, but if we made that same change for some of the assumptions up here, there would be a much greater impact. And realistically, a company is not going to go from 1% to 10% there. It might go to 3% or 4%. And as you can see, both those represent much smaller changes in the company's implied enterprise value. And then on the financing side, I mentioned how, in theory, the company's capital structure doesn't affect its enterprise value, but how in reality it does. And you can see that with this graph down here. Now, as the company's debt to total capital ratio changes and goes from 10% to 30% or 0% to 30%, enterprise value doesn't really change by all that much. You start seeing more changes once it starts going up to much higher levels. But the important thing to note here is that in the grand scheme of things, Think about the magnitude of the changes here. Between 12 and 14 billion for enterprise value, to go below 12 billion, you'd have to get up to around 70% debt to total capital. By contrast, look at these changes for revenue growth 
and operating margin. Enterprise value goes from 10 billion all the way up to 18 billion with just a slightly lower decline in annual revenue growth. And then on the operating margin side, again, as soon as you get to a slightly lower decline in operating margins, enterprise value goes from 10 billion to 14 billion, and then ultimately up closer to 16 to 18 billion over time, if you assume that the operating margin stays the same each year. There's also a sensitivity table in this file, so you can see exactly how this works. So if I had to sum up everything, it would be with these two graphs. Yes, capital structure makes a difference when it comes to enterprise value, but the difference is very small compared to changes in expected future revenue growth and also compared to changes in expected future operating margins. Let's do a recap and summary now. In theory, changes such as more or less debt or equity will not affect enterprise value, and that's the whole point of using this as a metric. So really, only operational changes, such as expected higher or lower revenue growth or higher or lower margins in the future will affect enterprise value. That's the theory. The reality is the following. Financing changes will still affect enterprise value because of the impact on the discount rate, but there will be far less of an impact than there will be with operational changes. So if a company goes from 10% debt to total capital to 20%, enterprise value will change a little bit, but there will be a much bigger change if the company's revenue growth in the future goes from 10% to 20%. And that's how you can think about the items that impact enterprise value and what actually affects enterprise value when you're analyzing and valuing companies.